Welcome to the broadcast, my darlings, and a very happy Friday to you on this 1st of March. The spring is heralded. Have you noticed the crocuses? I have on my walks over the past couple of weeks. The crocuses have been coming through. That always is the herald of springtime for me, even more so than the trumpeting daffodils. It's the crocuses. I love them bursting through with sheer determination and grit and ambition as they come through that ground with that turgid, erect force. My dears, have you noticed them? Beautiful. Just a sprinkling of them all over the kingdom. I love it. I really do. First of the month, first broadcast of the month. So in that spirit, it is time for me to remind you, as I do on a monthly basis only, to subscribe to the channel if you wish to be subscribed to it, meaning if you've found yourself accidentally unsubscribed, as many people tell me they do to this channel and every other channel. It's not just exclusive to mine. Just check your subscribed if you want to be here and also give that notification bell a tickle. It enjoys it. Give it a tickle and then you'll be notified whenever I broadcast. It is also time for me to thank everybody who might have sent a tip jar treat my way over the past month. I thank you most sincerely and your kindness is truly appreciated. Thank you. We're going to have a casual conversation today. Don't expect bells and whistles. Just a few comments that I've received and I might have a moan about something or the other as well if I feel like doing that. Oh, I should mention, shouldn't I? There's no books in my bookcases here in the library. And that is because it is spring, as we mentioned, and this first week of March is usually when I will do a thorough, thorough spring cleaning. I keep a very clean home at all times, my dear. But this is the time of spring cleaning, isn't it? How are you doing with yours? Uh, and one of those things that is being done is all my bookcases and all my books are being given a going over, if you will, and some of them even being catalogued. So they are going to be out of sight for a while. And I must be honest and tell you that I'm not quite sure how long they'll be out of sight for because I'm also undergoing various redecorations here at home. And there's going to be quite a bit of upheaval. I might even have to move rooms for a while or maybe permanently, possibly just for a while. But never fear, the books will return eventually for that cosy vibe and I'll try and find other things. In the, in the meantime while that's going on. And on the subject of spring cleaning, I'm going to promote a product to you that I've been using today for those of you who find it tough to remove lime scale. This isn't an advert, but something comes along very occasionally that does exactly what it says on the tin. And for me, that is one of life's things to be really cherished because it doesn't happen that often does it my dears you find these things with various claims about what they're going to do and what they can offer you and they always end up falling on the fuzzy side of the lollipop the fuzzy end and uh, one of those things is with the removal of lime scale and over the years I've tried everything from vinegar you know all the old housewives recommendations along to the the various squirty things that you get at supermarkets and nothing has been as splendid as my discovery of this week because there was some very stubborn lime scale in very small parts of some of the rooms here. HG Lime Scale Remover Concentrate removes stubborn scale quickly and thoroughly. I found this, I think I found it on Amazon, I don't know if it's available outside of the uh, outside of the United Kingdom. HG Lime Scale Remover. It did everything it promised and more. I cannot believe it. I am so delighted. <laughs> I am so delighted. It's not very rock and roll, is it, my dear? But that's what's thrilling me these days. Lime Scale Remover that does what it says it's going to do. Don't come to me with your lies. Squirty things from the supermarket. We're tough. We'll erase this, we'll get rid of that. You don't, you never do. And I've wasted my money again and again and again on these things. This worked, it dissolved off the lime scale. There was some on a shower screen, there was some around taps that was quite stubborn and quite thick. Please, my dear, please don't think that I keep an untidy, unclean home at all. That is not it whatsoever. My home is immaculate, 
but there has been some historic line scaling that would not budge. Today it budged. If you buy this stuff, I don't know what's in it and I feel a bit guilty about what might be going out to the river and the ocean in uh, throughout the sewerage works, you know, because it must be pretty harsh stuff. Wear marigolds, which are rubber gloves, but we call them marigolds here in the kingdom, my dear. They're yellow, the colour of marigolds, isn't it charming? Uh, wear marigolds up to the forearm. Don't splash it on yourself. Don't take risks because it's a thin substance. It's not a thick gel. It's very thin, almost the viscosity of water. So you either pour it over things as I did or apply to a sponge, dab it onto the lime scale. And then two minutes went by and I tried scrubbing and I thought, oh great, it's another con. It's another, another rip off. No joy, but I was being too quick. Leave it five or 10 minutes. Uh, even 15 on some, and you might have to come back for a second go, but everything that I wanted removed went. You just run a shower over it or pour some liquid over it afterwards to give it a good rinse off. Sometimes you might have to go over with a sponge with a rough edge, you know, or some sort of item. Sparkling new, everything sparkling new. Aren't you glad you tuned in, my dear? You're expecting lots of royal matters of the day and you get house cleaning advice. <laughs> well, that's a river broadcast, my dear. You never know quite what you're going to get. And I hate that saying from Forrest Gump, whatever it was. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It's so fucking dumb. You know every time what you're going to get because you've read the uh, ingredients list, haven't you? On the side of the chocolate packet, you know exactly what you're reaching into. So I don't know why that became so fucking famous, that line, because it was shit. It was the worst thing in the movie. And I don't mind the movie. I don't mind the movie. But now I've taught you how to remove your lime scale. And you'll thank me, ladies. This is the thing. This is why I brought it to your attention, because I know many of you will thank me or have similar problems. I want to begin by explaining something to newcomers of the channel we're coming on to three years now, so many of you have been here for a long time and understand the way it goes. Some haven't and don't, and I've received several comments. Now, I haven't broadcast for five days, and before that, I don't think I'd broadcasted for several days, five or six days. And I always, every single time that I'm away more than two days, let's say, I will get comment after comment after comment. I miss you. Where are you? I'm waiting for your update. Are you okay? I'm worried about you. Now, I can't stop these coming in, <laughs> and some of you might continue doing it just to annoy me, but I, with every respect and with appreciation that some of you will mean it only in a kind-natured way, and it's really nice that you want to see me. But that aside, I loathe them. I loathe those kind of comments, my dear. They won't inspire me to broadcast any quicker than I already do or hurry me up because that's really what these people want. That's really what you want when you say you're worried about me. Am I OK? You're waiting. You're waiting for me to broadcast again. It's not going to hurry me up. So stop it. OK. And if you can't handle me being fruity and having a little kvetch, then this isn't the channel for you either, my dear. Don't be take it personally. But I'm just letting you know that I'm not a YouTuber. Yes, I make videos and publish them on YouTube, but I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not a careerist YouTuber. I'm somebody who leads a very busy life. I'm tending to work matters, home matters, with all the stresses and strains and joys that they bring, socialising as well, and lots of travel. I. I travel all over the kingdom and beyond a lot and some months more than others. So there are many months, there are quite a few last year, some when I came over 20 times to you, over 20 broadcasts in a month and I will do that if I'm situated here and am able to do so and provide that sort of energy. There will also be months where I can't and every single month I usually will take several days away so it's not unusual. There's nothing to panic about. There's no upload schedule. If I come in once a month, so be it. If I'm dead, I'm dead. We have to stop this culture about, uh, I'm worried about you. Are you okay? But what will worrying do about anything, about anyone? But I'm telling you here and now, don't worry. 
if I'm not broadcasting. And don't try and hurry me up because it's, it'll put me off. It'll put me off broadcasting. As much as I am flattered that you want to see me, uh, that's the way it goes. Let's move on to the subject of the death of Thomas Kingston, which is an unspeakable, heartbreaking tragedy that has hit the Kents, in particular, of course, Lady Gabriella, Ella Kingston, special, lovely, lovely lady, a lovely, lovely man, killed himself. He committed suicide, this financier of 45 years old, who was also once a hostage negotiator in Iraq. And he was found dead with a gun by his side and catastrophic injuries to the head. He had taken lunch with his parents, not Lady Gab's parents, the, the Michaels, of course, my dear favorite icon, Princess Michael of Kent and Prince Michael of Kent, not them, his parents uh, in the Cotswolds, their house. He had taken lunch with them and then his father had gone off for a walk for half an hour and returned and the boy was not to be found and he ended up having to force his way into an outbuilding because he couldn't get into it. He was looking for his son, forced his way in and discovered the grave scene. And the police, by the way, are satisfied that the death was not suspicious in any way. So I think we can conclude that he topped himself and he was a fearless and committed Christian as well, by all accounts. So we are talking about a troubled, troubled soul here. And I have communicated and sent my well wishes to the cousin of Lady Gabriella, who we have brought into the broadcast before, a friend of mine, uh, Christina Oxenberg, who I affectionately call Bergie. My wishes are with her and her family. And if she wishes me to impart anything to you, then I will do so. But what can one say? other than the fact that it is so unspeakably sad and that tragedy can touch anybody with the most seemingly perfect life, if you will. Tragedy does not discriminate. Look at the sparkling couple that those two were from all appearances on the outside. Good looks, charm, charisma, wonderful lives, personalities, boundless opportunities, idyllic upbringings. These people can still have their demons. It's a lesson for us all, isn't it? Not to judge books by their covers. You know what a gorgeous man Tommy Kingston, gorgeous man, and gorgeous, gorgeous Ella, devastating. It's one kind of tragedy to go through life and never find love, if that's what you desire. But perhaps that's preferable to finding your great love and then losing them in a, in a tragic way. They're married in 2019, so they're five years, five years into a marriage. No children. I would say mercifully, no children. But hideous, hideous all round. So let's turn the page on that for now to the subject of Prince William's absence from the Thanksgiving service of his late godfather, King Constantine of Greece. And uh, Owen R. left a message asking, where the fuck was William yesterday? The Kents can put on a brave face on it and attend. The palace needs to be upfront about why William couldn't attend. Otherwise, we are left to speculate. He was his godfather after all. Harry didn't show up to his grandfather's Thanksgiving service, so maybe those boys just can't be asked with paying respect to their elders. <laughs> well, thank you, Owen R. I disagree with you, but I appreciate your fruity comment and for sharing your opinion on it. 
Generally speaking, I have always made it very clear that I think William is a fine man. There are a few knuckleheads out there. Uh, for example, when I made some small criticism about Prince William, I think in the last broadcast or the one before about his statement to get very vexed. And if this doesn't apply to you, it doesn't apply to you in the way that you put your message forward. But some will get very vexed and exercised with me uh, for criticising him. And, to be honest, they've got screws loose. Screws loose. There's barely scarce a person in this kingdom who has come to a public forum and heaped praise on William the way that I have done over the past three years. So you'll scarce find anybody who's done that, giving credit where credit is due and beyond. So I certainly don't feel ashamed that I'm not paying my part in supporting the future king because I make it very clear that I think we've got a great candidate for the role, <laughs> let's put it that way, well, oh, contender. We've got a great one, so I make that very clear. But I am not some sycophantic fan, and I don't like everything about William, just like I don't like anything, everything about my parents, or who I love, you know, extremely dearly and unconditionally and about my best friends. I don't like everything about anyone that I've ever met, including me. So why the hell should I like everything about William? And I am here to give my opinion and hold forth and let people know what I think. And how boring it would be if I trotted out like some sort of Pollyanna figure. William's great, William's fabulous. Here's his statement, isn't it lovely? That ain't me, love, that ain't my channel, if you want that. Go and play with your Pollyanna doll. That's not me. Where was I? Yes, I make it clear that he's a fine man. And I also make it clear when there is much that I do not like about his style. For example, I saw him speaking somewhere or other this week and he began using the phrase, your lived experience. And I know that that is the vogue at the moment uh, you know, your lived experience, when the word experience would have done quite well. It's just something that I personally don't find royal or desirable. I want my royals to be above the fads of the zeitgeist of the era. Do you understand my idea? Uh, and there is a sprinkling of wokery that I sense in William, that I certainly saw with the immediate dismissal of Lady Susan, even if she was still warmly embraced behind the scenes, that takedown of her I felt was unnecessary. Uh, you know, things along that kind of line. And as I intimated recently, the presidential undertones that he possesses. That's my opinion. He's not a deity. He is a human. Uh, and I'm addressing you, Owen R. here, when you speak about Williams missing uh, his non-appearance at the Thanksgiving ser service. He's not a deity, he's a human, and we need to consider the balance. Because I'm siding with William in this particular instance. You know, we could have been lumped with Harry. We could have been lumped with Harry as an heir to the throne. So I am very happy when I consider the balance of who we ended up with. Yes, the Kents indeed made that noble call to attend the Thanksgiving after the death of their son-in-law, and they should be applauded for that. William said his non-attendance was for personal reasons. And whatever irks me about William, and there's only a small percentage of things that irk me about him, I trust William enough to accede to the fact that that decision would not have been taken lightly to Mrs. Godfather's Thanksgiving service and let people down. I'm sure it was a great grievance to him. I trust that I know enough about him to say that, that it would have been a tragedy for William himself to have to do it. He, he would not have taken that decision lightly or glibly. He was due to give a reading there, you see. 
part of the service and be involved in it. And he knows that it would have disappointed a great many people. But as for the general public getting vexed about it, well, for a start, the vast majority of people in the kingdom don't even know who King Constantine of Greece was. They don't know the first thing about the royals of Greece. Uh, and a few years ago, an incident such as an heir to the throne missing a Thanksgiving service wouldn't even have uh, made any headlines at all. It would barely have passed with this a whisper, you understand, if this was in Charles's day as the Prince of Wales. Barely a whisper. Nada, nada. You know, a few, a few amongst the chattering classes in certain circles, but nothing widespread. This is a result of the age of social media where these things get speculated along. And as you said, Owen R, otherwise we are left to speculate. Well, with respect, with affectionate respect, don't speculate. Don't speculate then. And this goes for so many issues that are arising at the moment to do with the royal family and internet rumours and all their healths and are they dying. Don't speculate. If you're going to complain about being left to speculate, don't speculate. The same applies with Catherine. Uh, if it is vexing you that much, don't dwell on royal matters. Especially with regards to Catherine's health. Because as a reminder, her spokesman said originally, no, forgive me, her spokesman said this week in response to all the wild rumours going around, we always said that the Princess of Wales would be out until Easter and we are not making any further comments. The Princess of Wales is still doing well. And uh, there is some disagreement about this in the modern context, but my opinion still holds that people do not have the right to updates on the health matters of royal family members, particularly ones that aren't the king or the queen. We weren't even privy to the more intimate details of the late Queen's health as she was dying. We have a right to scrutinise and to criticise members of the working royal family, but that is with regard to their public role, the way that I see it. For example, their public roles as the Prince and Princess of Wales or as King and Queen Consort, not as Willie and Kate or as Charles and Miller. That is a different sort of affair and a different kind of gossip. We have been told originally doing well and we're told this week still doing well. So what do you want? What do you want, my dears? Do you want to hear that Catherine's out flying a kite every Wednesday afternoon and then she's off dancing a Kaylee on every Friday evening? in her recovery while she convalesces from serious surgery. What does one expect? Where's Catherine? What's she doing? Why haven't we seen the children? These are the kind of questions I get and I must confess that I find them inane. Imagine if they had said a couple of weeks ago that she's doing wonderful. You know, she's tap dancing, she's making a, making a speedy recovery and having wild, vigorous sex with William. Uh, and then two weeks later she... And it, an infection sprung up or she took a little turn for the worst. Then how would you feel? You'd feel that you'd been lied to and oh, something was going wrong. So they're in a position where they can't win, no matter how much they hold back, no, how mu no matter how much they put out there. They're in a position where in the eyes of the public, they simply cannot win. And if you recall, a spokesman also said at the time when the surgery was announced, the Princess of Wales appreciates the interest this statement will generate she hopes that the public will understand her desire to maintain as much normality for her children as possible and her wish that her personal medical information remains private. Kensington Palace will therefore only provide updates on Her Royal Highness's progress when there is significant new information to share. And then there was one further update saying that the surgery was a success. So when we speak about worrying, whether it's worrying about where I am because I've been AWOL for five days or where Catherine is because we haven't had, where's your Twitter update? I'm doing well today. 
I was out with the doggies today. My stitches came out today. I'm here on a drip with a catheter today. I was told that I'm going to die today. Whatever it is, my dear, worrying about anybody that you don't actually know personally should be discouraged. You know, well, I understand we're human. There is a natural concern that we can all have, even for those that we don't know. But beware of the parasocial element to these kind of inquiries, my dear, because moreover, worrying benefits no one at all. That's the main point. Worrying will not benefit you unless you enjoy worrying, and some people do enjoy worrying, that is, they're in the business of worrying, it gets the uh, adrenals pumping. Um, but it certainly doesn't benefit Catherine. It certainly doesn't benefit anybody. It doesn't behoove anybody at all. And if she dies, she dies. If we get an update of concern, we can express our concern at that time. If she recovers and flourishes, and there's a happy ending, then we can celebrate and jubilate. Do you understand, my dear? It's about channeling the royal spirit. It's about taking the decision to be life enhancing rather than life sucking an element of optimism and also grace and faith in these circumstances and I'm not even going to dignify any of the ridiculous internet rumours that I certainly don't look at that I get told about I'm not even going to dignify them with a response on this occasion all that nonsense on stilts and total sophistry Julia Wigger says, Dear River, I understand the Princess of Wales wants to keep her medical condition private, but we've seen nothing of the children. I'm just so worried. <laughs> oh, me, oh my. Julia Wigger, with every affectionate respect. Get a life. Get a life, my dear. Just so worried. Haven't seen the children. What, what do you want to see the children for? It's only been a month or two. We saw them all over the Christmas period. They're school children with a sick mama. Why do you want them paraded out on show? What exactly are you waiting for? And why are you so worried? We've seen nothing of the children. It's the same for those who tell me again and again. It's one of the most oft repeated comments about the Harkles children. Where are they? Why can we see them? Why do you want to see them? I think it's good that they're being protected and looked after and kept away from public glare but also they're not royal children in that circumstance either yes they are prince and princess but they're not in any capacity public working members of the royal family or representatives of the king so i have no desire to see that the children of private citizens i wish that their parents would stay away as much as the kids very strange Elizabeth Anderson, River Darling, I know you are very busy, but I'm getting worried because you haven't been around in a while and you know I depend on you. This is again after five days. I really truly in my heart hope that you are okay and that it is just that you're occupied with other things. Yes, yes, that's all it is. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, but please pop in, even if it is a one minute video, to let us know that you are okay, because all the other royals don't seem to be okay. <laughs> well, as for the other royals not being okay, uh, that applies to most families, my dear. Most of us aren't superhuman, and I'm sure that you, as well as me, have periods where it seems that two or three or four people are suffering from various maladies. It happens. It happens, and this is just a reminder, and it also happens within royalty. And many times in the past, it would have been concealed, and there would have been just as much medical difficulty. In fact, I happen to know that there is involving another member of the royal family at the moment, not with any serious cause for concern. It's more, more or less over and done with, but there have been things that have been concealed, or I should say not even concealed, because that's not the thing, just traditionally, it's private private matters. But in this day and age of social media and the internet where hospital staff can share whispers and leak things, uh, there's a different approach here and that. So that 
is what I say about other royals. But as for me, Elizabeth Anderson, you are probably a very sweet lady. Don't think that I'm coming down on you like a ton of bricks, just to be clear and to be rude. I don't mean it in that way. I'm sure you're a very sweet fruit, but what on earth is all this nonsense about me popping in to do a one minute video every five days to let you know that I'm okay because I haven't made a video for five days. Again, I tell you, get a life. I say it with all respect and with true conviction. Get a life, get out there, get up and out there like Prince Philip would recommend. Read a book, draw a picture, do something creative, masturbate, do whatever you've got to do, my dear, but dwell on something else. Dwell on something else. Really, five, four or five days I didn't broadcast, which is not unusual. I do it all the time. Please, there is no upload schedule here. Even if I disappear for two or three months or a year, you know, I can understand you missing me. But as I say, if I die, I die. We all die at some point. And I'm not telling you that I'm expecting to die any time before anyone starts reading into things. No, no, I'm in good, rude health. But I'm just letting you know that if I die, I die. Worrying about it and clutching your pearls or your rosary ain't gonna help or change it. And we all die, so you've got to face up to that kind of thing. Monique Morris responds to my criticism of parts of William's statement regarding, what was it regarding? Gaza. Interesting, since you didn't like William's statement, what did you think of the King's recent statement on Ukraine? Thanks for sharing with us as always. Well, my dear, you know, I did include the King's speech about Ukraine. I put it at the beginning of the broadcast, but it only emerged, I think, as I was recording or just before. It was the last thing I added to that broadcast, even though it was at the beginning. So I didn't have time to formulate a thought or I just didn't think about giving a thought about it. I just read it out plainly as it was to notify you that that was the message that was given. But for your information, I didn't care for it either. I didn't care for it either. The bit I didn't care for, which I thought was careless, is where it says the determination and strength of the Ukrainian people continues to inspire as the unprovoked attack on their land, lives and livelihoods enters a third tragic year. It's the word unprovoked that I thought was careless. Yes, indeed, it was, you could say, unprovoked by the citizens of Ukraine, although there are some who say that parts of that citizenship who remain loyal to Russia are separate from the rest of Ukraine and the rest of the Ukrainian people. And it should go without saying, but I will say it for the suckers at the back with one brain cell that we, what we have seen is a ghastly spectacle of violence, unimaginable violence over the past two years. But unprovoked politically and diplomatically is contested. That matter is contested. I'm not saying I contest it. I'm not saying you contest it. But the matter of it being an unprovoked political and diplomatic and geographical incident uh, involving a long history, a very long history, between the two elements and even more numerous factions is contested. And the sovereign in using that language has taken a stance, a stance, and taking a stance is not magisterial. It might suit some of your sensibilities, especially those abroad who don't understand the historical sensibilities of royalty and don't understand that they are not politicians and don't understand that they are not celebrities. But those of us who understand what royalty has traditionally stood for and the role of a sovereign, tend to chime with me, I've got to tell you, arrogant as it might sound. Some words, such as unprovoked, 
in this instance. Some words are imbued with a certain heat. They are hot words, if you will, and come with varying contexts. So you've got to be really careful, really careful. And it comes down to wisdom. It takes wisdom and discernment to avoid them. Shopping for pearls. That's a fantastic username, isn't it, my dear? Shopping for pearls. I've got a, a, a friend of mine that I call Pearl. That's not her real name. Her real name is Rebecca. Fabulous girl that I met at the French house in Soho, a drinking companion there on a wild boozy night. Met her with so many wonderful characters, a legendary evening it was. And we met when she was wearing pearls. I couldn't remain, remember her name after I met her originally, but we began texting and, you know, we stayed in touch after the hangover. And I kept calling her Pearl because I couldn't remember that her name was Rebecca. I kept calling her Pearl and I think I'd been wearing something that looked like diamonds. So she began calling me Di for diamonds, diamonds and pearl, diamond and pearl, we, you know, diamonds and pearls like the Prince song. That's what we call ourselves whenever we meet up and when we introduce ourselves to the boys and to strangers. I'm Diamond and she's Pearl. <laughs> I digress. Shopping for Pearls says, overall good programme, but please spare us anything about Camilla's other activities. She should never have been allowed to marry into the royal family. She is an un- she is an un, sorry, I can't read my writing again. She is an unrepentant adulteress and ruined both her marriage and Diana's. <laughs> he too is an unrepentant adulterer, ruining his and Camilla's husband's marriage. Well, shopping for pearls, wonderful username, but disastrous, horrible comment. One that I very much disagree with. Andrew Parker Bowles bounded and philandered around town about 20 times more than Camilla ever had opportunity to. He was bounding around all over the place, getting his dick wet with whichever. What's the word I'm looking for beginning with C? No, not that one. Whichever crevice would accept it. And uh, for your information, he is still best friends with the Queen. They are still wonderful bosom buddies. He went on to have a fabulous uh, second marriage with Rosemary, Rosemary Pittman, and it was a tragedy when she died before her time. And a lot of the ladies that he flirted with, to put it very mildly, a lot of the, friend, a lot of the women he was screwing were Camilla's close friends. So that's the first point. And the second point that I'll make, and I've made it before and I will make it again, is that if you're gonna feel sorry for poor Diana, because her husband was having extramaritals, I can understand it to a degree. But when you take into consideration that he was unfaithful with one woman, she was unfaithful with about a hundred men, you know, she was putting it about all over the place. Why, if you're sorry for Diana, you should be sorry for Julia Carling, the ex, the ex-wife of Will Carling, another one of Diana's playthings, another one of her dalliances, because Julia Carling herself has said that she blames Diana for the breakdown of her marriage. And if you don't find sympathy there, then you might want to speak to the wife of the late Oliver Hoare, Diane de Waldner de Freundstein. You might want to ask her how she felt about Diana's obsession with her late husband and all the hundreds of phone calls she made. I think I'm just going to park it there and leave you with that food for thought. Let's end with something cheery. Sarah York has been told that it appears her skin cancer has not spread. Isn't that fantastic news, my dear fruits?
She underwent further surgery to examine the area around the mole that was found to be malignant as well as her lymph nodes and she has learned that all are free of cancer. The doctors are conservative about saying cancer free, cancer free, but the nod and the talk is that that is what she has learned and the prognosis is good. The prognosis is good. She will continue to be checked every 12 weeks and people will be keeping an eye on her, but that is just fabulous news for our dear Fergie. Come back soon and see me, my dears. I appreciate your time and your company. And as I said, thank you if you sent a tip jar treat my way. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you next time. Stay fruity and always on royal duty. Ta-ra and toodle pin.